Hi, um, I'm level one student and I'm um, shadowing you today. Is that okay? Yeah, hi, I'm Sam. Um, I'm about to give some medication to this patient. Uh, did you want to get a quick report before we go in there? Sure. Okay. Uh, we're going to see Greg Lutz. He's a 67-year-old African-American male. He has no known allergies. Um, he's a full code and he ha he's a type 1 diabetic with a 20-year history of being insulin dependent. Um, he is on an 1800 calorie diabetic diet with 2 gram sodium restriction. Um, for his vital signs, they all looked pretty good. He came in with his blood pressure slightly elevated, but now it's at 128 over 70. Um, he has a peripheral IV in his right medium forearm, that's a 20 gauge. Uh, earlier today, his blood glucose was at 290, but after they gave him his insulin, it decreased to 242. Um, so because of that, we're going to be giving him his insulin today. Uh, he came in primarily because he was hyperglycemic, and he uh, had a pressure ulcer on his right heel, which he noticed three weeks ago, and it's been increasing in pain, and his blood glucose level he normally ranges around the 120s, but for the past five days it's been getting around the 300 levels, so that's the primary concern and that's why he came in here today. Um, with the wound, uh, the wound nurse already took care of that earlier today, but we measured it out to be a, like five and a half by two and a half centimeter. We noticed there was no kind of tunneling or anything and there's mild seroconsanguinous exudate with that. Um, he is getting his NPH and regular uh, insulin mix, and because he is elevated right now at 242, we're going to be doing a sliding scale along with his regular insulin one with that. Okay. Would you mind if I ask you a couple questions? Sure, no problem. Why specifically is this client receiving this medication, and what action does the medication have on the body? Well, uh, Mr. Lutz is a type 1 diabetic, and he's been insulin dependent for 20 years because his uh, blood glucose level is high now, and he does have the uh, pressure ulcer on his heel. He's going to need the insulin for that. Uh, as far as the action, it helps convert glucose into glycogen in the body, so it's better used instead of just floating around in his bloodstream. And um, it also helps with the uh, glucose absorption into the cells, along with potassium. Okay. Um when should you question administering this medication? Um, depending on the diet, if he was NPO, I would question that, but he's on an 1,800-calorie uh, diabetic diet, so there's no problem there. Um, also, if he was hypoglycemic, I wouldn't want to give the medication and lower it even more. Okay. Does, this, does the medication have a therapeutic serum level? Nope, it does not. What vital signs must be monitored? Uh, well, one of the uh, possible signs you can see with hypoglycemia are uh, tachycardia and palpitations, so you might want to keep an eye out on their heart rate, uh, along with that, their pulse and blood pressure. Okay. Um, what psychophysiological sorry, parameters should you be monitored when the medication is being administered? Well, besides the uh, blood glucose level, um, you would also want to check it for any kinds of signs of hypoglycemia, which along with the palpitations and um, tachycardia that I mentioned before could be signs like being cold and clammy, being uh, sweaty, having any kind of visual changes or changes in their emotional state, um, if they have like any headache, if they feel weak or any kind of tremors, things like that. Okay. Um, what interventions must be taught to the client to ensure the medication is administered safely in a hospital setting? Well, you want to make sure that they're aware of their medication, that they know uh, what kind of insulin they get, and that they know the effects of it, that they know the signs and symptoms of not only hypoglycemia, of, but of also hyperglycemia, hypo and hyper, and um, also that they're aware to keep their uh, the administration of their medication in the same general area, but to make sure to not inject in the same spot because that can irritate their skin and lead to hypotrophy. So uh, just make sure that they move the injection site to about an inch away from that and stay two inches away from the umbilicus. Okay. Um, what interventions must be taught for taking the medication safely at home? I know you mentioned some of the other, but... Yeah, again, you <clears throat> just want to make sure that they're aware to keep their injections in the same general area. If they change 
the injection site, uh, different sites can have different absorption rates, so they just want to be aware of that and, again, to not keep injecting in the same spot all the time. Uh, you also want to make sure that they're aware of proper uh, insulin storage and disposal and um, that they're aware of how to self-monitor their blood glucose levels. Okay. What are the side effects and potential adverse reactions? Uh, that would be the hy becoming hypoglycemic by giving too much insulin or uh, lipohypotrophy by administering it in the same spot so the skin just gets irritated from that. Okay. How will you know the medication is effective? Well, their high blood glucose levels will come down to a uh, more reasonable range. Okay. Okay. You good? Yep. All right. So, um... Here at this hospital, we take the medication out of the Pixis first, and then we take the insulin into the patient's room. So I'm just going to bring that up here. So I'm just pulling up the patient's MAR. Okay. Medical administration record, in case you didn't know. <laughs> All right, so he has his uh, mix of the NPH and regular insulin do, and because his blood glucose was last checked and it was 242, um, he's also going to be getting the sliding scale of his regular insulin as well. So we're going to pull both of those up here. Let's see. There's, there's the regular. This is the NPH and regular combination. All right, I'm just going to put some sanitizer here to wash my hands. And I've also got a couple alcohol pads here. So for the combination of the NPH and regular insulin, he's uh, regularly ordered 20 units of that two times daily, and along with that, he has the um, regular insulin on a sliding scale. So because he's at 242, his scale with that is going to be 16 units. So we're giving him a total of 36 units right now. I'm open that up. Just get that ready. And because this vial has a mix of the regular along with the NPH, remember you always want to go from clear to cloudy. So I'm going to inject air into that first, but I'm going to withdraw from the regular. And then we'll go back to that one with the NPH in there, just to make sure not to contaminate the bottle that's purely regular. So scrub the hubs with alcohol wipes. You want to make sure it's not contaminated at all, so try to count to 15 seconds in your head. Okay. All right. I'll get that here. And I'm just going to uh, pull back and get 36 units of air in here now. So that's at 36. You want to see that? <laughs> okay. So we're going to inject 16 into here. Make sure to not have it touch the medication because otherwise it will affect the other one that you're giving. Okay. Now we're going to go in here and inject the rest of that. Okay. We're going to turn this. And this is the one that's at 16. So I'm just going to make sure I get a good view of the measurements here. And I always pull back a little bit more just to make sure I don't get any here in there. And just tap here, make sure you don't have any bubbles. Okay. That's good. And we'll get the 20 from here also. in total. All right. 
And because we're withdrawing this from the Pixis, I do have to recap, but we're just going to kind of use the scoop method here. Make sure you never put yourself at risk for any kind of needle sticks. That's just an unnecessary danger to put yourself in. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of these here. All right, well, I'm ready if you are. Okay. All right. Knock, knock, knock. Hey. Hi, Sula. My name's Sam. I'm going to be the nurse that's taking care of you today. I also have a student with me that's uh, Gina, if you don't mind she, her giving. Okay. All right. I'm just going to wash my hands real quick. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I know that the uh, wound nurse came in earlier and checked on your foot. How's that doing? It's good. Are you feeling any kind of pain at all? Uh, no, no, not really. It's okay. Would you just mind verifying your name and date of birth for me, please? Uh, sure. It's Greg Loops, and my date of birth is 6 11 47. Okay, great. All right. And looking up here on the chart, you're right. <laughs> okay. And I see here that your last blood glucose reading a few minutes ago was at 242, so you know that means that I'm going to have to give you your NPH and regular combination along with the extra regular with that because you're at a higher level. Okay. okay. Are you familiar with your insulin medications? Yep. Okay. Let's see. Gonna... So you know that because your uh, blood glucose levels are high, the insulin is just going to help get the glucose into your cells, just kind of help your body better use it instead of having it just float around in your bloodstream. Let's see. Can I just scan your bracelet here real quick? Gina, you can see when it's a green circle there, that means that it's ready to be administered. Okay. Let's just do a 2100. Wow, you guys have a lot of safety precautions. Last time that you had your insulin administered? Um, I usually get them here in the bed. Okay. Um, do you have a, which was the last side that you used it on? Uh, they did uh, over here. Okay, we'll do it on this side then. Okay. And you're aware to move the different sites for whenever you're getting your injections? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Here. You want to go from a circular motion starting towards the middle and working your way out. Make sure that you're two inches away from the umbilicus there. I'm just going to leave that there to kind of pinpoint a site on their stomach that I'm going to be using, and you want to make sure that air dries. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to get ready. Just going to pinch. Stabilize the needle. And make sure you don't massage, and with insulin, you don't want to aspirate the needle beforehand. Okay, that looks good. Okay. All right, 
So some side effects that you probably are aware of that I just want you to keep an eye out for are um, kind of like the irritation in your stomach if you kind of keep injecting it in the same spot. Make sure that you let your nurse be aware of where you last, last had your injection. That way you, you can kind of rotate it within the same general area. Um, along with that, keep out for signs of hypoglycemia, which I'm sure you're aware of, um, like being cold and clammy, if you have any kinds of tremors, if you feel like your heart's racing a little bit, or uh, if you feel kind of any kind of weakness or anything like that. Make sure that you press your call light and let me know. <coughs> Oh, actually, <laughs> I just need to scan you one more time since I had the two medications to give at once. No problem. Sorry, my throat's really dry, so I'm like, <laughs> I have my eyes watering now. <laughs> Call it within reach. Is, are you comfortable with your bed at this height? Yeah, this is good. Okay, great. All right, so please don't hesitate to call me if you need anything at all. Thank you. Would you like your door closed for privacy or would you like it open? You can close it. Okay. <clears throat> so I had a couple more questions for you. Sure, no problem. <clears throat> Um, if there were pertinent pieces of information you reviewed before administering the client the medication, what were they? Well, I made sure to look at the client's blood glucose levels. Um, I saw that he was at a 242 when we went in, so I made sure to look at the medication administration record to see um, the, medic the insulin that was ordered, along with the NPH that he had to get at this time. He also had the sliding scale of the regular, so that came to a total of 36 units that he had to have at this time. And um, he didn't display any kinds of signs of hypoglycemia or uh, lipohypertrophy, so that was that. Okay. Um, just two more questions <laughs> I have. Did this information affect your decision to administer the medication? If yes, explain how. It did because his uh, blood glucose levels were elevated, so he... And he is a type 1 diabetic, so he needed the insulin there. Um, he wasn't unconscious or anything, so there wasn't any reason for me to not give it um, as ordered. And uh, just because he had the sliding scale with the elevated blood glucose levels, I made sure to give the combination of NPH and regular along with the regular. Okay. Um, and my last question, did this information affect how you administer the medication? Um... It did because he he had it ordered uh, with the sliding scale uh, for an increase in blood glucose levels. So because of that, I administered the 16 units along with the 20 that he was ordered to get at this time. And um, they were ordered sub-Q, so there was no reason to indicate that he needed um, an IV of glucose or anything like that. So uh, that was about that. Okay, that's all the questions I had. Okay, Thank you. Great.